Hi, my name is Sonny De Hadley, um, also known as the Social Leadership Guy. Uh, my background has been uh, as somebody with lived experience of, of problematic use of drugs, um, which ravaged my life, uh, took away my innocence, um, and you know, made life very difficult for me to, to live uh, with any great meaning or purpose. I think communities such as homeless communities um, are disproportionately affected by things such as drug policy. Uh, it, it's not just obvious that they're affected by poverty, um, but quite often, um, you know, having a very draconian way of dealing with people uh, doesn't really meet their needs um, and further kind of traumatises them and stigmatises people. Uh, I think the perfect example for me is around um, synthetic drugs and synthetic cannabis um, uh, more exactly. Um, you know, that was, there was talk that it was going to become illegal uh, and you know at the time I was, I was worried and concerned that already vulnerable communities who were the one, ones that were predominantly using things like spice and other synthetic cannabinoids would be further demonised. Um, so I think we have to get away from the, the thinking that we can just arrest our way out of, out of these social problems um, because that's simply not the case. Um, in terms of bringing about the, the, the level and scale of uh, change that's required, uh, I would call for um, a kind of a conscious shift uh, to, to actually dealing with root causes, so why people or certain communities end up in certain situations. Um, I think having a really frank and honest uh, conversation about where the barriers are and importantly where the solutions lie, which really fits in line with um, the value of lived experience. You know, lived experience can either be something that people sit with and they just carry on doing it. And when I, t when I talk about lived experience, I'm talking about social harm. You know, people have that, that have been affected by mental health, that have been affected by gambling, that have been affected by homelessness. Um, who better than those individuals to actually be the ones that are then deciding how to go about tackling, um, you know, more people or future generations going down this road. Now, this concept isn't new. You know, the the um, you know the, the the theory of having people with lived experience involved um, in decision making has been around for a long time. But what I would say is that by having people sat around a, t a table and consulting with them and buying them a bit of lunch and saying, okay, what's working, what's not working, but then having no more conversation with them and taking that information, that intelligence, I think there's a danger that things get lost in translation, um, that the context by which people say things might not necessarily be how other people see it. So I very much kind of champion uh, lived experience to be a thread throughout the system and processes. So I'm currently classed as a, a Lex leader or a lived experience leader. Um, and for me, it was so refreshing to see other people from, you know, other, other type of lived experiences from different parts of the, the UK um, who faced very similar challenges. You know, I thought that I would, this was just me and, and this is the battle that I have. But I think, you know, when people come together, there's much more power. Um, so now, you know, working alongside some fantastic other people, we've created a, a lived experience movement. Um, which you know, I would encourage people who perhaps uh, are thinking about activating their lived experience, and I have to be very careful about this. It's activating lived experience that that you've been through, or um, to then go back and try and tackle or support other people affected by the same thing. Um, so the website for that is uh, www.lexmovement.org. Uh, please subscribe for free. Um, what we're hoping to do is really, you know, to build on this movement to look at how we can have um, a, a sort of infrastructure organisation. Because um, wh what I realised over the years is that there's so many great small organisations that are doing just wonderful work within the community, but they either haven't got the capacity or, or the knowledge or the technical knowledge to understand the importance of capturing outcomes and um, um, you know, diversifying their funding streams or looking at you know, making sure they've got the right governance. Uh, structures in place. So what I'm hoping is that through this uh, this Lex lived experience network uh, and infrastructure, we can then actually provide a much needed um, uh, resource to, to to lived experience um, communities and leaders, 
so that more people can come forward, so that you know communities themselves can demonstrate, well, this doesn't work, but this works, so we need to scale that up a little bit more. Um, and it's a really exciting part of the journey because there's a, whole, there's a lot of interest in this, um, and I think if done correctly, uh, and as long as other portions of society don't see it as being um, a way in which you know, we're trying to take power from them, because we're absolutely not, we are trying to complement and enhance what already exists. Uh, and surely, you know, that there's strength in valuing the diversity um, of knowledge and the, and, the, and the equity that that can bring uh, to try and create this social good. Um, it's, it's an exciting time and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it develops.